postmarked 1918. 1918. Oh, these are just awesome. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today. And in this video, I'm excited to be bringing a vintage haul to you. Now, I have been sharing my brooch collection here on my channel. And don't worry, we will be bringing back the brooch next Wednesday. But we've got a short interruption to celebrate 4th of July. And in honor of America's 246th birthday, I thought it would be fun to share some 4th of July themed vintage. So, let's jump into the haul. Okay, so the first item I got is probably coming as no surprise to all of you because you know how much I love my typewriter ribbon tins. And I picked up another typewriter ribbon tin to add to my collection. This is a fine service brand. It is a fabulous typewriter ribbon tin with great art deco graphics. I love the blue and white color for 4th of July. Now, this is one of the half inch ribbon size tins. That means that this was probably after 1895 when Underwood actually standardized the ribbon size to half inch as opposed to one and one half inch. So this probably falls late 40s, early 50s. Now it does have the decorated metal mark on the side. Decorated metal made a ton of these typewriter ribbon and tens back in the day. Don't know that you can see that on camera, but just imagine it's there. I love the Art Deco graphics and just really how fabulous this tin is with the airplane. So a really great pickup and a great addition to my collection and so for the July. Now, the next item I have going along with the tin theme is pretty fun. I was very excited to find this at Eco Helix. Now, we all love our Scotch tape tins, but we don't see a lot of the Texas L tape tins. And I was very excited to get a mini Texas L tape tin. This is so cool. Look at the graphics on this. And what's even cooler is when you flip it around, look at the tape. That has blue tape with the silver stars and that striping. How fabulous is this? Just love these little miniature gift wrapping tape tins. And they are really, really great in a printer's tray, which is where I have this little guy. Now, we're gonna continue the theme of tins because tins are like chocolate. You can't just have one, you gotta have many. So this is a tin that was gifted to me by Pamela Blanchard through Abby over at Cozy Curated Cottage. And this is a Scotch tape tin, and this is one of the little gift wrapping tape tins. And look, it's got stars on it for 4th of July. How fun is this? I'm just a sucker for tins. There's something about the graphics that just pull you in, and you gotta have them. Now, the last tin that I'm gonna share with you in this haul is a cool tin that I picked up from Vintage Vinny. He had this tuck tape tin, and I actually don't have this one. And I love the red graphics, very rusty crusty. Now this actually has a two digit zip code. So that means that this probably dates from the late 40s to the early 50s, because in 1948, they used two digit zip codes for large cities. So think like LA and New York. And then in 1963, five digit zip codes came out, and those are are when those were used. So this is a really, really cool advertisement piece. Nice large size tape tin and really fun red and white for the fourth. Now I did pick up some things a while ago from Jeffrey and Barb. They've got a great live sale every Friday night and Jeffrey and Barb sell together. And I think this was one of Barb's items, Winking Owl Antiques and Jeffrey Real Nifty Vintage. And this is just so cool. I love anything with playing card graphics and I had to have this. This is a hundred lucky poker chips. And look at the graphics on this fabulous piece. Can you just imagine someone playing with these? I certainly can. And it's red and white, so I thought I'd include it here for 4th of July. Love the 100 Lucky Plastic Chips. This is made in the USA, and they are interlocking and washable, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know when this was made. There's really no other identifiers on this. I was kind of thinking 50s or 60s, especially given by this circle graphic at the bottom. To me, for some reason, that is very 60s. But you guys let me know in the comments what you think and what era this is from. Just love those graphics. 
Now, I did pick up some cool things from Instagram, and Lyrics Vintage has just an amazing account. I've been following her for a long time. She's a reseller in Canada. She's got all those rusty, crusty, cool things, and this is a piece I picked up from her. Now, this is Mend It's. Well, it's kind of like Mend It's. It's the same concept. I believe this is the Canadian version of Mend It's. This is Mend Stars. And look how awesome this packaging is. I can't believe that this has survived that long. Now, this repairs pots and pans, and it's by the Spoline Company out of Walkerville, Ontario. And it's supposed to have a little wrench there that you can apply these on your broken metal pieces. But I think this is so great. And you could put this in a flower frog, but just this old advertising tells such a cool story. And it's a really neat addition to my collection. So definitely go check out Lyrics Vintage on Instagram. Now I did pick up uh, some cool die cuts and I really don't know the age of these because these are not marked Beistel. Now Beistel made die cuts through the 70s. That's probably one of their big known times for making die cuts, but they also made 40s and 50s and 60s die cuts and there's different markings on them to kind of help date them. These are not the H.E. Lures die cuts from the 1940s that we all are looking for, but I thought these were really fun and great again for 4th of July. So this is a whole set of die cuts I got off of eBay. These probably were in a classroom of some kind. This is the Statue of Liberty. It's got the little hole for hanging on the top. They're just these little cardboard die cuts. And then I got the Liberty Bell. So here's the Liberty Bell. Great images on these, really cool detail and great shape as well. None of the cardboard's really bent or torn, which is nice. And then we've got Abraham Lincoln here. Now, I think that these probably all came from the same set, might have gone in a history classroom of some kind because there's definitely a history theme here. And I don't know, again, if these are Bystol or not. A lot of the ones I'm finding are Bystol online, Bastille, Bystol, however you say it. But I'm not 100% sure that these are. I just think that they're really, really fantastic. And then you've got George Washington here. And the last one is the famous Capitol building in Washington, D.C. So this was a whole set on eBay. Really, really fabulous. And I can't wait to magnetize these to my door because this is going to be pretty fun. Now, the next item I picked up is a brooch because you guys know how much I love my brooches. And I love going to fans and stoves in Jacksonville. There's a lady that has just a wonderful booth filled with vintage brooches. She's just amazing. And this is one of the brooches I got from her. Now this is a red, white, and blue pinwheel. It's got the beautiful marquee set prongs, set stones, and it's just stunning. Look at this, guys. I just think it's gorgeous. Um, the, the pin does extend a little bit past the pin back, so that might help date it. I've heard that that means that it's probably older. It does have, I believe, the C clasp on the back, if I've got that right there. And this is just so cool. And what I like about these brooches is that they're small enough that you can cluster them with others. So I will definitely be rocking this in my 4th of July pin, and it's just gonna be a fun combo. Now, the next thing I picked up was from Sean over at Skunky Junk. Now, he had his first live sale, and he did a great job. It was 4th of July themed, and he had these antique postcards. And, oh, I had a soft spot for postcards and advertising and all kinds of things with a cool graphic. I'm in. You've got me. And I thought these were just so great, so I had to pick them up from Sean. Now, these are all antique postcards from the 1900s. And I just think they are gorgeous. So the first one here says, Honor the Brave. You've got that little winged cupie. And I just think the images are lovely on this. And then when you flip it around, this is postmarked 1909. And look at that, you guys. The script on that, the way they've done postcards, the lettering is to die for, and then you've got the vintage or antique stamp, which is just so cool. Now, this is actually signed, and I do want to read it. This is signed, uh, of course, the same year it was postcard, 1909, postmarked, and it says, My dearest sister, how are you, and what are you doing? I am feeling real well today, and have loved 
I have lived to dim, I still take my breakables, my breakfast and support in my room. It has been a cold and rainy for the last few months, but the sun is finally coming out and shining today. All is good. Love, and I can't read the person's name on the bottom. Some of this old handwriting can be hard to read. But I wonder if this person was in a hospital. It seems like maybe they were in, in some sort of facility writing to family. But I just think that this is a gorgeous, gorgeous postcard. Look at the way the gold is done around those laurel leaves. Oh, man, just stunning. And this is made by the design company. And then it's got, of course, the 1908 mark on the bottom. Just so cool. Now, this postcard was not signed but it is an antique, and this is Honor the Day. The greeting is sent with all good wishes, and you've got the American flag and then the holly berry, just gorgeous. And this is a Gibson postcard, which is pretty amazing. We all know and love Gibson. Now, Kelly over at Moss Stone Story Vintage did a wonderful video. I highly recommend you checking out on how to date postcards. And one of the things that stuck out to me is she talked about postcards that are significantly older do not have this mark down the middle, this line. So all of these do have the line down the middle. So that does kind of help date these. And of course, what's nice is these are uh, postmarked and you can definitely feel that they're true antiques. They're not the reproduction postcards. And I did get a third one in the lot from Sean. And this one says, a letter from one so far away makes the outlook brighter, clears the way and cheers the day and makes our tasks the lighter. And then you've got that really, really wonderful image there. Now, this is from Miss Frank Monday out of New Jersey. And it says, Dear Mother, I am okay. 12 o'clock Sunday night, everything fine. I will write a letter tonight again. Good luck and love from, I think it's Tim. Tim or Pam, I can't read what that is. But you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think that writing is on the back there. And this has that wonderful postcard as well, uh, postmarked, and then it's three cents stamp, which I just love those old stamps, just so cool. And this is poked, postmarked 1918, 1918. Oh, these are just awesome. So Sean, I love these. They are a prize in my collection and they're really, really fun. I also got another really cool piece of vintage advertising from Vintage Vinny. Now, this was something I believe that he sent to me in friend mail, and I've been squirreling it away for the fourth, and now I finally get to enjoy it again. This is Buy Defense Bonds and Stamps. And on this side, you've got kind of like an Uncle Sam, and then you have a soldier on this side that says, For Victory, Buy United States Saving Bonds and Stamps. And it's got the cool graphics. Now, the matches are not in this, but that's not really why we want all these vintage matchbooks, is we want the covers, because the covers are just amazing. And I love the graphics on this. Definitely war era and so, so awesome. Okay, so the last two items I picked up in this haul are vinyls, because of course this wouldn't be vintage and vinyl without some LPs. Now I do spend these every patriotic holiday and they sound great. I bought these years ago at Second and Charles, a used bookstore that sells LPs, and I found them in their dollar bin and there was nothing wrong with them. It's just that these kinds of things don't typically sell very well. And of course I had to have them because they looked so good. So this first album I'm gonna share is really a star-studded album. This is Great Songs of America for the US Olympic team. This came out in 1983 on CBS and this is just awesome. So this has Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, Joel Gray, Mitch Miller, Glenn Campbell, Johnny Cash, Tennessee Ernie Ford, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, Philadelphia Orchestra, Boston Pops, Robert Goulet, uh, Mahala Jackson, Kate Smith, and so many others. I mean, this is just such a star-studded album. Now, this, of course, has songs like Yankee Doodle Dandy, God Bless America, From Sea to Shining Sea, This Land is My Land, My Country Tis of Thee, God Bless America, Stars and Stripes Forever, Washington Post, This is My Country, 
really, really great album. Highly recommend picking it up. And again, perfect for 4th of July. Now the last album I got is USA. Now this has some of the similar tracks to the US Olympic album, but this is all instrumental orchestra music. So it's that great Boston uh, pops kind of sounds, symphony sounds, it's just wonderful. So this of course has Olympic fanfare on here, American Patrol, Semper Fi, Under the Double Eagle, Bagpipes and Drums Melody, National Emblem, Stars and Stripes Forever, When Johnny Comes Marching Home, Fifes and Drum Melody, El Capitan, Washington Post, and the Star Spangled Banner. So this is a really, really fantastic LP. I want to say this came out around 1970, 1980. It's on Angel, and it's just really a good record. So if you find these out in the wild, definitely pick them up. Great for your barbecues and your 4th of July parties. You can have those spinning around while you're cooking and having fun. Really great, great music. So guys, that is all I have for you today. I wish all of you guys a very happy 4th of July. I hope you have some yummy food, some good fireworks, and uh, definitely enjoy celebrating America. So happy, happy birthday, America. Happy 4th to all of you guys. And I hope, as always, that you will stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. Bye-bye now. Oh,